Well, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here, and let's wake up the football gods. Good morning, guys. Let's... Uh, Let's get right to it right now as we speak. It is about 930 uh, Central Time in Dallas. Jerry Jones is supposed to start doing in-house interviews starting at 9 a.m. One of those interviews has been canceled, which was with Joe Witt. Joe Witt basically saying, hmm, maybe it's not as big a job as you're thinking it is, Jerry. And he has gone with the left hands up the Washington Commanders, right after they announced that they are signing Cliff Kingsbury. The interesting part about Cliff Kingsbury is he was the offensive coordinator for Clab Williams. And the thought with the Washington Commanders having the number two pick, they may be in play to try and bring him in, knowing that they have quarterback issues. Now, here's where I want to bring up something that's, to me, kind of interesting as it just hit me right now. We have been debating the merits of Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys in a quarterback situation. But for a minute, I want to think back just a little bit on the commanders who have been searching for a quarterback for a long time. After drafting Jason Campbell in the first round with the Chuck and Duck offense, where they literally beat him into the ground, they decided to go the route of Donovan McNabb. We're going to get ourselves a veteran proven quarterback and traded for him. He was there for one year, got about $34 million and walked away. Literally did absolutely positively nothing for the commanders. After that bitter pill that they swallowed, they decided to get back in the deep end of the pool and they took three number ones and a second to draft RG3, which worked pretty good for one year until his knee got shot on that turf that is FedEx field. Many, many careers have ended on that field. Be that as it may, they were fortunate because they drafted one Kirk Cousins in the fourth round. Kirk Cousins was a really good quarterback and actually had stability with him, where they French tagged him not once but twice. He left without any compensation going their way. And since that time, when they decided we're moving on from Kirk Cousins, they paid $73 million on a three-year deal to Alex Smith, who was sucking ass the first year he was there until he ended up having a spiral fracture that was so bad that he had 21 surgeries before eventually coming back in the last year of his contract, getting them actually to the playoffs. In the meantime, in between time, and you do your thing and I do mine, they ended up drafting Dwayne Haskins. Dwayne Haskins, who liked to hang at the titty bar and wasn't really focused in on football the way he should have been, rest his soul, unfortunately, dying tragically in Florida. We can go down the list of the Colt McCoys and the Josh Johnsons, and, you know, they ended up saying, we're going to go ahead and get a journeyman quarterback that's done well everywhere he goes. Everywhere he goes, he always gives you have hope because he's magic. And Fitz magic. Fitz magic, game number one of his career with the Commanders. A guy who's been on some of the worst teams, basically mentoring the guy that they drafted, couldn't make it through the first half of the first game with the Commanders. Yeah. Yeah. Then, of course, there was Eyebrows who actually played pretty good for them. I believe he's in Atlanta right now. He got away in one piece. And then they decided Sam Howe, he was howling good until they were howling to get rid of him. And there's many, 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 many more quarterbacks that have been there. I bring all this up as they get Cliff Kingsbury having the number two pick they may need to trade with the uh, Bears to move up to make sure that they get him because somebody else may offer a King's Ransom to the Bears to move up to that spot to take him. I say all this to say the commanders 
probably would have been in better shape and have had more picks to put towards quality players and maybe even more cash had they just stuck with Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins in the time that he's had in his career, this is the first year that he's ever been hurt, has almost twice the touchdowns and half the interceptions of all those guys that the commanders have had since then. Yeah. But I will say this much about the commanders. I will say this about the Eagles. I will say this about the Giants. At least those guys are recognizing their problems early. And they are addressing them and trying to do something about them. The Dallas Cowboys are always a step too late, a step behind. The inches are all around them that they need. But for some reason, they take their time. They don't get there. They wait. And this in lies the problem. While Washington has now hired their defensive coordinator, their offensive coordinator, and it looks like they have plans for their quarterback position, we still don't know which one of our in-house staff is going elsewhere. So Aiden Durton is supposed to be interviewing today. I don't know that Al Harris is one of the internal interviews that they're going to do, but he may be going to Washington as well with Joe Witt and Dan Quinn. And here we go. We are looking at uh, interviews starting tomorrow with uh, Wink Martindale, with um, Mike Zimmer, and Ron Rivera. And if you've noticed, the thing that all these guys have in common, they're all very old. They're not the new wave of type of coaches we're looking at now. The Cowboys are still stuck behind looking at their coaches as opposed to being more proactive and being more of a follower as opposed to being a leader and an innovator. And herein lies the problem with the Cowboys because Jerry Jones looks at it and says, this basically is a primo job. This, he doesn't think is hampered by a lame duck, Mike McCarthy, that he is going to make a big splash where Unless you get Bill Belichick somewhere and surprise everybody, I don't know that how you make a big splash unless it's a belly flop, which is always a big splash. So we'll see what comes out of the meetings today. I'm sure we'll hear positive things about whomever, if it's only one interview today or not, And then we'll still be waiting, I'm sure, several more days while the other teams continue to go ahead and build their stuff. We are behind. Yeah. Going all in is what Jerry said. Let's listen to the big move by Washington. The splashy big move by Washington. More deeply into it. But now we have sneaky, huge news from the NFL in our nation's capital. The commanders are hiring that man, Cliff Kingsbury, to be their offensive coordinator. Why is this so huge? He, of course, spent last fall as USC's quarterbacks coach and senior offensive analyst, meaning he worked directly with Caleb Williams, who projects to be the number one overall pick in this year's draft. And as Adam Schefter tweeted, let the speculation begin. Kingsbury coached Caleb Williams last season. Williams was a standout quarterback at Gonzaga High School in Washington, D.C. The Commanders currently hold the number two overall pick and are in striking distance of the number one pick that belongs to Chicago. So Shefty's got the speculation going. Caleb Williams, meanwhile, in what could be described as an innocent post on Instagram, just says, my dog, congrats. That's the definition of plausible deniability. Mm. (laughs) Is it not? And so there's Neek, who also is in the D.C. area and thus will have insight into all of this. But, Dan, I will start with you. Is the speculation now going to run wild about the possibility that the commanders will do everything in their power to go up and get Caleb Williams from Chicago? Yeah, because it had already been out there for a while that that the new ownership in Washington has been sort of interested in the idea of can you get Caleb Williams, local kid, make a big splash. Again, new ownership, you know, trying to establish something. Uh, there in D.C. So that will be out there. The question, of course, becomes 
can they do it, right? Or if the Bears are set on taking Caleb Williams, then this isn't going to happen. Uh, it reminds me of 2020 when the Bengals had the one pick and the Dolphins and some other teams were making overtures to try and go up and get the one pick and take Joe Burrow, and mm -hmm. the Bengals just said no to everybody because they were sure that's who they wanted. Now, are the Bears as sure on Caleb Williams? Might they keep Justin Fields? Would they be okay with trading back to two and taking Drake May? Uh, that's all going to float out there for a while, and, and Bears GM Ryan Poles, who went through a similar situation to this last year, is going to look at all his options. I'm, I'm confident of that. Also important to note that Drake May, who I think a lot of people think could be the second quarterback yep. taken, uh, played at North Carolina for a coach named Phil Longo, <laughs> who was the offensive coordinator there for a while, who runs kind of an air raid style offense similar to uh, what Kingsbury runs. So it could be that Drake May could play in a Kingsbury system too. But to your point, yes, the speculation now you know, gets going full speed. And the name Jaden Daniels from LSU, the Heisman winner, will come into the conversation somewhere as well. I've, I've been studying every mock draft and everything that comes out. All of them have Caleb Williams first. Mm -hmm. And then I would say they're sort of split on number two. Some of them Drake May, some of them Jaden Daniels. The question is, you know, uh, uh, Dominique, it's an interesting choice of words that Shefty used, that, the, that Washington is within striking distance of the number <laughs> one pick. Well, that distance can be however long the Bears want it to be, right? Sure. The Bears can make that distance yeah. just a little bit if they want it to be, or they can make it an, 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 a chasm that no one could mm -hmm. possibly get across. What do you think, Nate? Yeah, I mean, I think we're worried about what the Bears want and what Washington wants, but there are some certain opportunities, rare opportunities, where it does matter what the player wants. And when the player is as good as mm. Caleb Williams, we can see times in the past that so you can go back yeah. to John Elway or Eli Manning where they forced their way to a place where they were more comfortable. And while I know it's going to rub people the wrong way, there's nothing more important to a quarterback than where he lands to start his career. It's going to determine how things go going forward. So I think Caleb Williams will be wise to consider what leverage he has to get to the place where he wants to be. And Chicago is a really great football town, but I'm not sure that they have a great track record. Actually, I'm not even going to try to be diplomatic. They have a pretty yeah. terrible track record <laughs> of developing quarterbacks there. So it's worth considering uh, moving to another place. Not that Washington has a great history <laughs> either. But not figuring out where he can get himself to uh, feel comfortable and having your college uh, quarterbacks coach and a location might make it a little bit more comfortable for a quarterback like Caleb Williams. Let, let's remove all any semblance of diplomacy from the conversation. Chicago is my adopted second home <laughs> and I love it more than I <laughs> more than I can put into words. Chicago for a hundred years has been where quarterbacks careers go to die. That's so is what Washington. Chicago is. And so if Caleb Williams does have an interest in trying to force a situation, it wouldn't be that surprising. Literally the only franchise that has never had a 4,000 yard passer in a, in a season. I mean, you got to go back to Sid Luckman, maybe <sighs> one year of Jim McMahon yeah. for outstanding Luckman. quarterback play. Now, all that just takes one person to change. Sure. Because I remember when we were speculating, you just mentioned Joe Burrow. I remember we were speculating sitting right in these chairs. Yes. Is Joe Burrow going to force his way out of Cincinnati? Does he not want to go to Cincinnati? Well, look how that has all worked right. out. Obviously, they've been in a Super Bowl and whatever else. Dean Wood, what do you think of all this? So, a couple things for me, and I think Dan already referenced it. Number one, mm. sizzle, right? Like, Dan Quinn is not a sizzle hire if you're the Washington Commander. Right. You come in new ownership. You want some. You want something splashy for the fan base. What could be more splashier than having a local kid, you know, moving up in, to the number one spot mm -hmm. and having him be the face of your franchise? Yep. That's why this whole thing just smells like something's going on here. Obviously, with Cliff Kingsbury. Also, I will uh, point out the discussion that we had uh, this morning. Our production meeting is like as it relates to the Bears. What exactly do they do you want to draft Caleb Williams or do you have an opportunity move down one spot and collect a lot more draft picks there you go. to build around your team and you're still able to get one of the top quarterbacks right. in this draft. That's something that my fellow BC guy Ryan Pohl, general manager Ryan yes. Pohl, is going to have to really think long and hard about. Right. The, the equation yeah, the is, question will would you be is Caleb Williams or would you rather have one of those other guys May and Daniels plus whatever draft picks you can get, right? I mean, once upon a time, the Bears went from three to two, right, to get Mitch Trubisky, and yeah. they, they threw an extra couple third-round picks mm -hmm. uh, at the 49ers to do it. So there is a framework for that if, if you're talking about trading up one spot, but I, I would think you could get more uh, for this spot. That it, it, I would think that you would get Washington's next two number ones, but then again, what do I know? I'm a guy with a day job and a voodoo doll, but definitely Washington is, with new ownership, definitely looking. And you have to think that Clive Williams is the guy that they are circling by bringing in Cliff Kingsbury. 
And as always, we know what the Cowboys do. <sighs> We're going to make a big splash. <laughs> yeah. We will. Uh, a big splash. Yeah. We will talk about this later on, good people. I'm Mark Holmes, and as always, I appreciate you. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. And the only thing else I got to say is...